to plead their case, unknowns cast aside. I love to see their face, can we spare the light? Are we afraid to see them, prisoners of history? These beautiful minds trapped inside, bring them back to life. Let them shine, let them shine on, let them shine, yeah, let them shine. snuff them out we've got to let them flame let them speak their name let them reach up to the clouds can't eat if we don't feed them can't read if we don't teach them there's no light if we just hide them don't just let them die let them shine Let them shine on, let them shine, yeah, let them shine on, oh, let them shine, yeah, let them shine. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Andrew's Wesley United Church. We're an open-hearted, open-minded, LGBTQ-affirming church that walks in the path of Jesus because we long for greater peace, love, and justice in the world. So, whoever you are, whoever you love, whatever stage of your faith path you are on, know that you are welcome here. You have a place here at St. Andrew's Wesley. As we walk into worship, take a moment to put down all of your burdens, your to-do lists, everything that's left undone, and just be here now. We worship, work, and play on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh. And you might worship and live on a different territory. So take a moment to put that in the chat box and to share with us anything else you're doing on reconciliation. Now let's light the Christ candle together. Once there was a person that was so amazing and he did super awesome stuff. And one day his followers asked who he was and he said, I am the light of the world. Often life is busy. We're pulled 13 different directions to Sunday. There are always errands to run, groceries to pick up, meals to cook, children to bathe and clean, laundry to do, bills to pay, uh, the car to get fixed, bus tickets to renew, garbage to take out. The list is endless. And sometimes it seems like the noise can be crushing. And you just want to stop. But even if you're able to carve out a little bit of time in your day where you have a chance to breathe, to do some yoga, to meditate, to light a candle and pray, that doesn't necessarily mean that your mind will stop. There are always things that chatter away in our mind, always things to think about, to worry about, to-do lists to make, resentments to gnaw on like an old bone, and we realize that even if you have some space in your day, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be space in your mind, breathing space in your mind, and so it helps if we have a practice that helps quiet the mind. 
until we're quiet enough to actually sense the presence of the sacred and to listen carefully to a deeper wisdom. So about five weeks ago, we started a worship and education series on naked spirituality, and Reverend Gary Patterson began this series uh, five weeks ago today with a sermon on naked spirituality, how we can remove some of the obstructions that get in the way, serve as barriers between us and God, how we can lessen the noise, the internal chatter that is, uh, creates static and prevents us from hearing the quiet voice of God. And so today we conclude this series, but we hope that we don't conclude the practice. Naked before God, we come to worship just as we are. And so naturally we begin with song, like a healing stream. stream in the fire desert spirit water bringing life to dusty earth God is trickling through our lives in a dream unfolding promising revival and rebirth like a healing Gentle rain on a thirsty garden. Spirit water comes to nourish tiny seed. God is bubbling through the soil to coax a new creation. Yearning for an end to want and need. Like a gentle Like a river strong with the restless current, spirit water rushing on the distant shore. God is carving out a channel in a new direction, calling for an end to hate and war. Like a river strong. A mighty sea reaching far horizons, spirit water with a love both deep and wide. God is working in our hearts to shape a new tomorrow. God will always challenge and provide. Like a mighty sea, like a river strong, like a gentle rain. Like a healing stream Hello everyone and welcome to our children's time for today. Today in children's time, we're going to be talking a little bit about vines and that's because Gary's going to talk about vines in his sermon. In one of our scripture readings, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so we're going to look at these vines in my garden because learning about vines and looking at them can help us to understand our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with God. So I have some handy dandy vine facts here in my phone. This vine is from a squash. So some squashes grew on here. We've harvested them all for this year. So this this squash is going to bed for the winter. But squash plants are really neat because you can eat all the different parts of them. You can eat the leaves and the stems and these little spirally tendrils and the flowers and of course the fruit, which are the big squashes. Um, another kind of common vine are beans. We grew some beans, but we've harvested them all for this year. Beans are one of the fastest growing food plants and it takes only a month and a half to go from a seed to a plant that you can harvest. And humans have been growing beans for food for over 6,000 years. So that's long, long before Jesus was even alive. 
Another vine that we have had in this garden is called clematis, and clematis are flowering vines. The word clematis is actually the Greek word for vine, and there are some kinds of clematis that the seeds are ground up and used as a substitute for pepper, and so they're actually called pepper vine. So the, the vine that we're talking about in the, in the Bible that Jesus is mentioning, he's talking about a grapevine. And grapevines are vines that can live a really, really long time. The oldest known grapevine that's still living is over 400 years old. So think about a person you know who maybe is like in their 90s or 100. It's like four times how old that person is and it's still producing grapes. So I wonder what these vines have to teach us about our connection with God. I wonder if you have ever come close to any of those vines or another kind of vine. Hmm. Thanks for wondering with me today about vines. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, where Jesus talks about being the vine and we are the branches. Carol Pan will be reading and offering the gift of a reading in two languages, English and Taiwanese. It is a gift because it is a reflection of the multicultural reality of this city. John 15, verse 1 to 5. I am the real vine, and Abba is the farmer. Every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes is cut off, and every branch that is grape-bearing is pruned back, so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me, make your home in me, just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine, you are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant, separated, you can produce a thing. Next, I am going to read same scripture in my mother tongue, Taiwanese. What he tine for the chill, why pay she so unerang? Tina denti why tea, bo ke kwe tea, eat you ten kira. Tina ke kwe tea, eat you shoe ho e chinky. Ho e ke kwe tea, go kate. Da lin in the wa so kari kong e dori. 已经清气了This has to be one of the strangest sermon experiences that I have ever had. This sermon, this whole service, is being recorded five days before the American election, and we will actually experience it on YouTube five days after the American election. 
And by the time you are hearing my voice, you will have answers to all the questions that are roiling around in my innards. Who won the election? Trump? Biden? When will we know? Do we know? Has all chaos exploded south of the border? And, and what is needed at this moment? A sermon of hope, a sermon of, well, rallying the troops, a sermon of lamentation, a sermon that is social justice centered and that we are rallying together to stand. And, and we have no idea, I have no idea about what is needed. Now, now get this. You probably realize from hearing Dan's call to worship that this is the end of our series on naked spirituality. And I have the luck or the irony of preaching on, guess what? Harmony. And who said that God doesn't have a sense of humor? Because harmony is the last thing that I'm expecting after the election occurs next week. But then I began to think, maybe talking about spirituality is exactly what we should be doing. That's really the church's business. You don't actually need to hear me give my political analysis of what's happening in America or the state of affairs in the world at large, nor do you need me sort of rallying troops, as I said, for some misunderstood purpose on my part. Instead, what the church needs to be about is precisely spirituality, because spirituality at its best and at its truest is focused on enabling us to connect with and strengthen our relationship with the holy mystery and the loving presence that we call God. We are so hungry for that deep connection. We don't always know how to name it, but we can feel an ache in our being, a yearning for something to hold us and to guide us. What I want to say is that I believe that no matter what has happened in the American election, no matter what is happening with the COVID cases, whether spiking or falling down, hopefully the latter, but regardless of what is happening in the world at this moment, I believe so deeply that God is with us. And we have only to open ourselves to be aware of that deep reality and to work on being open enough so that we are connected and we can sense that love and we can sense that presence and we can be comfortable with the sense of the mystery. You see, we are so often so busy, so unconnected, and we don't realize that God is always present. God is here feeling what we are going through with with joy and with our sorrow and with our lament and with our terror. God is holding us, not as a person, but in a personal way, so that we feel we could use metaphors like father or mother or lover or friend. God is not directing the show. God is no puppet master with a prepared script or a blueprint that has been followed to the precise order. It is up to us and the movement of spirit to create something new. God feels the pain, and then God offers us deep, deep loving support, a strength, a resilience, a comfort, almost like being held in the arms of love, God saying, I am with you, Emmanuel. God saying, when you pass through the rivers and the waters, I will be with you. And then God is inviting each and every one of us to take yet another step on the path that leads to the flourishing of life. Life for ourselves and for our neighbors. Life for the poor and the downtrodden. Life for all our relations and life for the earth itself. God says, partner with me. Come and join in the work of mending the world. And we will be able to move forward and watch, no matter what is happening with us, no matter what the election. And so, Brian McLaren, in Naked Spirituality, is attempting to help us understand how we might make that connection. And he talks about spiritual practices that become tools or possibilities that enable us to become clearer about our connection with God, that create a vulnerability, that create an 
openness, well, that in fact place us naked in the presence of the holy and to know that we will be received in love. Now, to McLaren's concept of spiritual practices in a movement towards ultimate irony, harmony, I would also like to add a metaphor that comes from music. It is, as you might guess, rooted in a poem entitled The Second Music by Annie Lightheart. And she writes, Now I understand there are two melodies playing, one below the other, one easier to hear, the other lower and steady, perhaps being more faithful because less heard yet always present. When other things are alive and real, this one fades. Ah, but the sound of it, the touch of it, is like fingertips, like the names of children spoken over each child when they are born. I want to stand in this music without striving or cover. If the truth of our lives is what it is plain, the telling is so soft that it becomes beautiful, this mortal time, this irrevocable change. I stop. I stop and listen to the second music. And I hear children in the yard, a train, birds. All of this is in it, and it will pass. I set my ear to it as I would to a heart. Two melodies playing. I'd like to expand that and suggest there may be three melodies, maybe even at times four melodies, interweaving, but somehow coming together to make music that is good for our soul, at times discordant and lacking in harmony, but then moving to a new resolution and deep and wondrous chords that actually give peace to our souls. It's almost like McLaren wants to set down a great bass line in his very first spiritual practice. He wants to say, you need to be here and present and paying attention because when you do that, your heart will naturally fill with an incredible sense of gratitude, a thankfulness that is always present no matter what may be happening around because the world is indeed incredibly amazing if we have eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to feel. Our poets sometimes remind us of that. E. Cummings, I thank you, God, for most this amazing day. Or Gerard Manley Hopkins, the world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like the shining of shook foil. We carry memories of those moments of gratitude. I still remember when I was six years old when I first heard and then saw a hummingbird. I have an incredible memory of gratitude watching my two-year-old granddaughter first discover the ocean. I have spent the last week on the west coast of Vancouver Island at Tofino, and I am giving up huge thanks for long, long beach walks filled with wind and waves and gulls. I'm giving thanks for small kindnesses, a shared meal, a kiss, people coming together. I give thanks for laughter and for love. It was Rabbi Heschel that said, just to be is a blessing, and just to live is holy. So this is one melody that is established by the practice of offering up thanksgiving and gratitude. But a new melody, well, calling it a melody is perhaps generous, but certainly musical notes, some jarring, some flattened, often discordant. They come and they try to blend together, which is, in fact, the music of our all-too-human screw-ups. 
we make a mess of things despite our best intentions. We don't want it to be that way, but still things go off track. They go awry and people are hurt and we are hurt. Sometimes it is the big moments and events like an election or perhaps like the wars that we will be remembering in a few days on Remembrance Day, November the 11th, as we lift up all those who died in the war all the women and men and all the children who were collateral damage. And did you know that at this very moment in our history, there are 40 wars around the world that are happening right now? I think of movements like Black Lives Matter or reconciliation with our indigenous brothers and sisters. I think about all that is happening around climate change and the fear and the hope that maybe we can stop it. Sometimes a person can just find themselves sinking in this other music. It feels so depressing, so staggering. And that's not even suggesting that there are the small moments that we ourselves are engaged in, moments when not our best selves come forward, moments of pettiness or pride or self-centeredness or greed or a mean-spirited or or apathy. But McLaren says, yes, this music is there. Remember that it blends with gratitude and that there are spiritual practices that will enable us to say sorry, that will enable us to confess that will enable us to be real for once and not pretend that we are more spiritual than we actually are, more holy and kinder than we actually are. We will be able to stand forward in all honesty and confess. And it might very well be that we need to draw from Jewish tradition and say feeling sorry might also need to lead to action and to change. Do you remember the five R's that Rabbi Burnham shared with us several weeks ago? That in order to repent, to practice teshuva, you need to both recognize what's happened, have remorse, have the desire for repair. You must then resolve to do it differently, and then you must repeat not, actually take action. But the good news The good news in this music, in this practice, that when we are open, we will be opening a door to channels of grace, of mercy, and forgiveness. In fact, we will discover, we'll discover that God is, in fact, already present, already welcoming us, already forgiving, already saying, okay, let that music slide in and we'll have the two melodies playing and there will be a moment of harmony. Can you accept that you are accepted? But then more music will enter in. This will be in a minor chord. It will be somber. It will be the music of our pain and suffering, the tragedy that lies at the very heart of the world. And sometimes it will just sweep over us like like a wave of grief and horror and, and just undermine us completely. We won't know what hit us and we will be struck down by this pain and this suffering. And this is, in fact, a third music in the minor key. And how will we blend that with the other practices, with the other music? Well, McLaren suggests that we might practice lamentation and just let it rip our great sadness at all the things that have happened. Some of them, yes, are a consequence of our own decisions or things we decided not to do. Some of that pain and tragedy is a consequence from decisions other people have made. And sometimes it's just come out of left field, like pandemics or earthquakes, things we have no control of, and life just comes out of left field, hits us, we're knocked off, and we just cry. And McLaren is suggesting that God is big enough to handle our rage, our why, our when, our no, our anger, and respond, and respond and say, yes, I understand, and as you struggle, Trust that the love will come through and the light will be present and you will be held. Three melodies that are rooted in spiritual practices, a deep 
gratitude and thankfulness for it all, a real movement of confession and being sorry and allowing the regrets to surface and being honest about who you are, and dealing with the tragedy that lies at the heart of so much of life and still feeling that we are being held and that God will be with us. Not bad for whatever is happening after an American election, no matter what occurs and no matter what answers there are to the questions. There are a number of ways that we can access this through yet other metaphors that come to us from Scripture. Just a few weeks ago, we talked about that sense of God's presence and love as if it were a drink of water, fresh, fresh, bubbling up to eternal life. Like we sang at the beginning, God's love like a healing stream, a gentle rain, a river strong like a mighty ocean. We might find ourselves reveling in the metaphor that Jesus used when he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. You are connected to the life force. You are connected to the earth. You are connected to a divine energy. And it is through you, the branches, that the leafing and the fruiting will come. We work together in partnership. Just allow yourself to become part of the vine and to know that when you are at home in Christ, then you will flourish. And if you do not have that spiritual rooting, you will become exhausted in your efforts to move to fruition, to do good works. You, in fact, need that holy energy. Or maybe maybe another way of thinking of the same thing comes because I have just been spending time over at Long Beach. And I need you to imagine a couple of Sundays past, I'm standing on the beach, The wind is blowing and my arms are stretched out and it is my moment of worship. And I find myself singing. Spirit of God in the surging of ocean, blowing to greatness the trees on the hill. Spirit of God, I long let you only fill the earth and bring it to birth and blow where you will. Blow, blow, blow till I be, but breath of the Spirit a-blowing in me. Not classic harmony, a rough voice, but a deep yearning for the wind, for the water, for the vine, for God who is holy mystery and loving presence, spiritual practices that will enable all of us to come closer and closer and we will hear the music and we will say yes to the music, yes to the giver and we will say yes to that invitation to become menders of the world, to become an embodiment of compassion and kindness, to work for justice and for the full fruition for all. May it be so. Amen. I think this song is saying that nearer to the beginning and end of our lives, we are less encumbered by the very busy world we live in and are more able to embrace the wonder of a naked love. We are born To this world perfection All we know Is the love that we live in No pretense, no need to clothe The naked love we know Love is pure, we are pure God is pure Our world is love Life goes on We become young men and women All we know Struggle every day we live Mom and dad, friends and foes The world that doesn't know me Life is pure, I am pure God is pure, I look for love Racing through the middle I have all my shields around me, girded so I 
can face the world I'm in Guarded love, careful dreams I control the world around me Where is love? I'm not sure God is lost Where is love? Slowly drop my robes Let God's daylight see the true me I think that now I see how life's charade has come to fool me. I am old. Maybe now I see the answers. All I know is love lives within me. No pretense, no need to clothe. The naked love I know, our love is all. We are all, God is all, our world is love. Love is all, we are all, God is all, our world is We'd like to invite you for us all to pray together. And today, I'll leave some spaces in the prayer so you can name out loud or into the silence the prayers that you have on your heart. Let us gather. You are the vine, and we are the grapes. We give thanks for the abundance in our lives the lushness of the land we live on and care for, the relationships that fill our cup, the blessing of our bodies and the ability to create, to hold another close, to grow and change. We speak out loud now or in silence all that we are grateful for. You are the thresher and we the grain. You see where we fall short in our own lives and help crack us open. Understanding that we need not be ashamed of mistakes and missed opportunities because in you we can heal, forgive, and change. You witness all the times we miss the mark of being loving with others of not turning our back on those in need, or of putting in the boundaries that are required for us to have the energy to be light in the world. We take this moment now to speak out loud or enter into silence all the ways we wished we had done better this week. You are the well and we are the cup. We turn to you for help in our lives, knowing when we are stuck, you are not. And we long for a drink of living water that will help us transform, learn, heal. So we name now what we want help for in our lives. You are the yeast and we are the dough. We call to witness all the places, causes, and concerns we're carrying and wish to see transformation for. In our cities, we may ask for affordable housing, for people to not needlessly die from drug overdose, for us not to lose hope when we're tossed in the COVID-19 waves. And we name in our community those who we think need to feel you more fully. Margaret, Douglas, Philippa, Mike, Corwin, and Tyler. And we name out loud those issues that are on our heart that we want your tender care for. And we say again, you are the vine and we are the fruit. 
May we be fruit that bears love to this world. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There's a saying that if you want to get something done, do it yourself. But if you want to be creative and take a vision far, go with community. In these times of the pandemic, when there is so much unsettled in our life, we particularly need to be aware of our connections with each other and how our lives are intertwined with each other. We're trying to go far and take this opportunity to do things in a more life-giving, sustained way for each other and for the earth. And so that's why it's important that we come together and share our resources as a community, especially keeping in mind those who are in need, those who are in financial straits, those who are just needing a a bit of a boost right now. And so uh, we give thanks for your generosity and ask you to contribute with your resources as you are able. You'll see on the screen a number of ways where you can make a contribution. And please know that whatever you're able to share, whatever you're able to give, we are truly grateful. And now we have a uh, star light uh, bright moment with Christine Spreader talking about a really beautiful, exciting program, the Advent Calendar. Christine. Hello and welcome to the Adventure 2020. This is the first edition of a seasonal calendar with daily reflections through the season of Advent, Christmas, until the beginning of Epiphany. What to expect from those daily devotions? They can be thought-provoking, inspirational, entertaining, and so much more. Interactive, reflective, every day a surprise. Why this calendar now? I'm Christine, originally from Germany, where the source of inspiration for this Advent calendar is. I approached Jen at my home church at St. Andrew's Wesley United in Vancouver on unceded territory of the Squamish, Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh. I told her my vision is to create such a calendar for an English-speaking audience. And she loved the idea, brought it back to me in 2020, saying, this is the year, Christy. This year, we might not be able to meet in person for Christmas services, but it's the season to be touched and to touch. Follow St. Andrew's Wesley on Instagram and Facebook, on their webpage, or sign up for their newsletter to stay tuned how to purchase this calendar for $20 each. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song Blow through us, bring strength to move on Our world seems inward, defensive, withdrawn Spirit God, hear our song Patient God, soothe our pride, calm our fear Comfort us when we know you are near We grow more certain, our vision is clear Patient God, calm our fear Loving God, be our voice, be our prayer Reaching out, joining hands as we share We seek your guidance through friendship and care Loving God, be our prayer Spirit God, be our breath, be our song Flow through us, bring strength to move on Through change, through challenge, we greet the new dawn Spirit God, be our song
Friends, we have come to the end of our time together in worship, and so let me say, as I often do, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those we travel with. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. The hand of God to hold you, the grace of God enfold you, for the love that dreamed and formed you still surrounds you here today. The light of God be with you, beside, above, and within you, the light that shines to guide all of us home to the loving heart of God. Amen and amen.